Greetings friends, I have another video topic here regarding languages. Alright, this video topic is going to be about language learning, like basically techniques that people do to learn languages that work for them versus learning in an institution. Now, Professor um, Arguelles, probably, probably like number one language learner, you know, that I've come across, basically a very accomplished academian, scholar, very accomplished language learner. Um, he's, you know, he's he's had these same, he's the same topic has came up with him, because he's been learning languages for years and years and years, and he, you know, got a lot of respect for that guy. But basically, the issue is, like, you have, you know, a bunch of students that want to learn a language. Now, obviously, each each one of these students is going to learn a language a little bit differently. Now, one thing I've noticed is. The two, there's two kind of big topics that stand out. The one of them is some people learn better learning from like more of an analytical type of way, like showing grammar tables and grammar, case endings, noun declensions, same thing, and then you know verb declensions and like structures, like grammatical structures. For me, that's really important. That's a really important way to learn. I think that's the way I learn best. Okay. But also, there's another way to learn, and I've noticed some of the, like, more females, it seems to be learned better this way. You know, you can't really make, like, gender whatever assumptions, but um, females, some of them, turn, and some people learn better seeing example sentences, right? Like, have an idea and show how that's expressed, just the whole sentence, you know what I mean? With no, you don't need to show, you know, the, grim, the like, the, the noun tables, the verb tables, all that stuff. But so, the thing is, you need both of those things. You need it for me, or for anyone. I think it's important to show both of them. And if one person, when I say both of them, I mean the grammar tables and the example sentences, right? And so for some people, you know, they're going to pick one or the other way. But I think you need to present both of those things in order so that people get the whole picture. Now, unlike I was saying, okay, some, there's going to be some things that as far as learning the language, which is my goal, are going to be important. But there's other things such as learning a language at a university or at a school or, you know, obviously, like, a teacher is not going to be able to adapt some kind of lesson plan for all the students, you know what I mean? Like, students are going to have to learn how they learn languages and do that on their own. And then when you present, you know what I mean? when the teacher presents something it's got to be general and so students have to realize that when you are going to be learning a language like you as a language learner if you go to a class that class is going to be having certain things like some kind of framework set up that's going to be a general framework and you need to take that framework and use that and expand on it to do your own way and basically what professor Agues is saying is like you know what I mean like you go to university and some of the things that they do there you know what I mean, are going to be, if you focus on that only, you only focus on what the university does, you're not going to be able to really fully learn the language the best way you can. And so for me, what I do when I learn languages, like in a classroom setting, sometimes I don't do what I'm supposed to do because I know it's not as beneficial to me as if I were to do something else. So I think that's important. I think that's important something to realize. And... Uh, Basic, basic recap of what I just said is that if you go to a classroom setting to learn a language, you need to realize that there's a lot of good stuff coming out of there. Number one, you're going to hear the language spoken if you have a native speaker. Number two, you're going to have a person who's maybe not an authority, but someone who knows a lot about that language, probably more than you. Okay. Number three, you're going to have to be doing homework and some kind of, you know, like grammar exercises, writing assignments, reading speaking and listening, very beneficial for learning the language. Number three, you as a student don't have to think about what the teacher is planning. You just go in there and you get told what to do and you do it and you learn the language. Okay, that's a lot of good things about learning language in a classroom setting. However, all those things cannot be specifically adapted to your specific needs as a language learner. Okay, and you have to realize that some of those things that the teacher wants you to do maybe not be beneficial for how you learn the language and you need to pick and choose find a balance 
between the system and your own personal language learning needs. And that's all I'm saying in this video. Okay. Next, one last thing I'd like to give a great shout out to uh, one of the great language learners out there. Um, in my opinion, one of, um, in my probably speaks the most number of la languages natively. It's Loki254524. I got from, I think, Belgium. He speaks Teocho, which is basically a southern Min dialect. He also speaks Mandarin Chinese, you know, which is kind of given if you're in that area. And then also lives in Belgium, so he speaks French, I think French and Dutch, and then obviously English. That's like five languages that, from what I've seen, he was real young. He's real. He's a little bit of a younger guy, growing up now. But uh, when he was young, he spoke all these languages, and obviously reading and writing too. Oh, Japanese, I think. So, that, I mean, that impressed me. But the thing is, it impressed me because, you know what I mean, he was still young enough where, where he could acquire those languages naturally. I mean, like if you grow up... Here's a great example. I, I, I always like to take Northern Africa. If you grew up in Northern Africa, you can potentially speak as native languages. Arabic, French, and English, and a Berber language. That's four languages you speak natively. Pretty unrelated, okay? And then also, let's say you grew up there until you were six, and then you moved to, like, China or Hong Kong, right? Then you moved to Hong Kong. Then you would speak possibly Cantonese, Mandarin, and English. Well, again, so that's, like, six languages. You know what I mean? And if your parents, one of your parents is Russian, well, you know what I mean? You have parents speaking different languages, that's possibly like eight languages. And the closest guy that I've seen to that is is Loki, Loki 5C4. You know what I mean? So, i just like to encourage everybody out there to keep learning languages. Don't give up when it gets hard. And uh, that's it. That's all I got.